Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we want to see how we can work with angular speed and linear speed. So the idea behind this is that essentially when we have a wheel or something rotating like this, it has two different types of speeds. Uh, one type of speed is the angular speed, and that's essentially giving us information about how many times it turns uh, per unit time. If I'm talking about linear speed, then I'm really talking about some sort of point on the edge and how fast it's going. Or another way that you can view this is if you had this uh, as a wheel and it was rolling along the ground, how fast the wheel would be going. Now, if you uh, have those two ideas in mind, you might be interested, like, how are these things even connected? Well, the connection is this. Uh, if you know the angular speed, that'd be this omega over here then you can find out its linear speed by taking the angular speed and multiplying by the radius. So let's go ahead and mark this off. So this is angular speed, and we will call this one linear speed. All right, so we'll see a few examples where we essentially just use this to either find angular or linear speed. Uh, and near the end, watch for a kind of a tricky problem where we'll have to also do a lot of conversion in our units to make sure we get the uh, proper speed um, in, described in the way we want. All right, so let's go ahead and start this. So for this first one, we have a wheel that is rotating at 14 radians per second. And the question is, well, what is the linear speed in inches per second? So here I have just a nice little diagram of this wheel. We can see that it has a radius of 16 inches. And again, this information is telling us uh, more about how many angles it will go through uh, every single second. So 14 radians. So we borrow our formula. Linear velocity equals uh, r times omega. And we start dropping in our values. So the linear speed is equal to uh, 16 inches multiplied by 14 radians per second. All right, so no surprises, no tricks for this one. We simply get that the linear speed would be 224 inches every second. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's try one that goes the other direction. For this one, we have a wheel that is rolling along the ground at 120 centimeters per second. And this one wants to know, well, what is the angular speed in radians per second? So again, here I have my wheel. It has a, a nice radius of five centimeters. And we really just want to drop in all of the information and see what we get. So linear speed equals the radius multiplied by the angular speed. So uh, the linear speed would be the speed that it's rolling across the ground. So this is my 120 centimeters for every second. The radius comes from my diagram, looks like it's just five centimeters. And what we don't know is we don't know that omega. I'm not really sure what its angular speed is. Well, let's go ahead and divide both sides by five centimeters, and this will give us 24 radians per second. Not bad, see, nice, simple, and easy. All right, let's do that one last example I mentioned where uh, we'll, we'll use this formula to get our foot in the door, but then we'll also have to convert our units to make sure we're describing it in just the right way. For this one, we have a wheel that is rotating at 215 times every minute. And the question is, what is the linear speed in miles per hour? So one thing you really wanna keep track of is notice how we have information on how much this wheel is turning, but it's not really the angular speed. You know, that would be in like radians per minute or radians per second. Also, um, what I'm really looking for at the end is the miles per hour. So I wanna make sure my units fit that when I'm all done. Uh, let's do some conversions to get uh, underway. So I need to convert my revolutions into radians. This isn't so bad. You're gonna take your 215 times that it rotates every single minute uh, and you're really just going to multiply this by 2 pi. Because every single revolution, every time it goes all the way around, that's 2 pi radians. All right, so not too bad. Now that we have this, this is what we will call our angular velocity, since now it is in radians per minute. So let's go ahead and drop things into our formula. So our velocity would equal our radius, which is 10 inches, multiplied by... Uh, our angular velocity, one minute, 
And now I can multiply all these together and see what our linear speed is. So V equals, let's see, 10 times 215 times two pi. Let's see, according to my calculator, 4,300 pi all over one minute. Uh, and this is in inches. Okay, so that's a perfectly good linear speed. Uh, 4,300 pi inches per minute. Unfortunately, what we really need it in is miles per hour. I need to fit the context of the problem. So we're gonna borrow this linear speed and actually just go through a, a unit conversion process. Pi inch, there we go, uh, one minute. And what we want to turn it into over here is we need to turn it into uh, miles per hour. And the way we're going to do this is we're essentially going to multiply by fractions that equal one. So for example, uh, if I want to turn minutes into hours, I need a connection between minutes and hours. And the connection is this, uh, 60 minutes, there are 60 minutes in one hour. So I'll multiply by 60 minutes per one hour. So this entire fraction is essentially equal to one since there are 60 minutes in an hour. But the reason why I'm using it is notice how those minutes are on the top and bottom, they'll cancel each other out. And so I'll just have inches per hour as my units. All right, let's see what else we can convert. So inches needs to go into miles. Uh, I'm not sure how many inches are in a mile, but I can, I can work my way up. I can say that there's one foot for every 12 inches. So again, this is, is equal to one, but I'm putting the inches on the bottom so it will cancel with these inches in the top. All right, and it looks like we need one more fraction. Uh, there is one mile for every 5,280 feet. Okay, so if I go through these uh, fractions carefully, uh, all of my units should drop out except for miles and hours, and then I can see what numbers I need to multiply by. So let's start, let's say I got some inches, so those are gone. Minutes will cancel out. I have feet, those will cancel out. And sure enough, the only thing left is I have miles and I have hours, and now I'll multiply the numbers that are left over and see what I get. All right, so let's see what we got. I got uh, 4,300 pi multiplied by 60. So that's 258000 pi. And on the bottom, I have one times one times 12 times 5,280. And the units, this will be in miles per hour since that's the only units left. Uh, again, using my calculator to kind of help with this, um, I got around 12.79247 miles per hour, not bad. So as you can see, that formula is going to get your foot in the door that linear speed is equal to the radius times the angular speed. Uh, but also watch for problems like this where you may have to do a little bit of work converting your units, in which case simply multiply by fractions that are equal to one, and that'll get it into the proper units. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.